Hey there, how's it going? So this is my trash picked RGB monitor here and a few people have been asking for a follow-up video so I wanted to show it to you because the, this TV is all back together and uh, let me show you how I finish this up. So this is a pretty cheap TV. The picture tube is quite bulbous. Um, it's definitely not elegant, it's not flat by any means. The composite signal is decently sharp. There's actually no sharpness control of any kind on this television set probably because they figured over RF it was so soft anyways. So in the menus, yeah, there's no so, uh, sharpness. But the resolution on composite, yeah, it's not too bad actually. I've played this through, um, hooked up the Nintendo to it and it looks okay. Currently we're just seeing some SMPTE color bars through my test pattern generator. Of course this thing has minimal processing for chroma, dot crawl, things like that. So you can see here, we got dot crawl here, we have dot crawl here, a little chromatic aberrations. But that's to be expected on a low-end television like this. It just was never designed for high quality. Here's a good close-up of the dot crawl here you have between the, uh, what color is this, the magenta and the green. Yeah, typical NTSC artifacting. If you're from Europe and you're used to PAL, I don't think this is something you get at all with PAL. But yes, NTSC, you get this moving dot pattern between contrasting colors. It has to do with the way NTSC encodes color on top of the black and white signal. One of the hallmarks of a very cheap set like this is the horizontal and the vertical deflection. So when you get really bright sections of the screen, you're going to uh, affect the deflection of the overall electron gun. And you can see that right here. This should be a nice flat line on both sides, but it's curving right here. And that's because going from black to white, this affects the entire power supply of the set, and you get these kinds of distortion. But again, par for the course for a very cheap TV set like this, you really need a monitor like the PVM. To not have this issue, you have to have a monitor here like the PVM, not the Sony Watchman here. But this has a really good power supply in it, probably dr drives the deflection circuitry separately than the main um, picture, so they don't affect each other. Here we are on the back of the television, and here are the mods that I did to the case to facilitate this RGB mod. This is the original RF connection, which of course no longer does anything because I've completely cut it out. These are the RCA jacks I've added, and this is the toggle switch. So let's start from the top here. So the RCA jacks, I took them off another stereo component, which is why they're in clusters of four. Um, my fault, I when I drilled out the holes in the case, I was doing it by hand because my drill press couldn't get around this large back part of the case. So I made a mistake and that's why there's two extra holes here. I'll probably put some tape over it. But the way I have this hooked up is this top left white connector here. This is actually the composite signal right here. So the composite or sync. So when you're going to use RGB, you got to give it sync or you got to give it a composite signal for the sync. And that's where you connect it. This one on the right doesn't actually do anything. It just goes nowhere. So I should probably just stick some hot glue in there to prevent confusion in the future. Um, now these two rows, this white set here, starting at the bottom is the R, G and B inputs. And on this side, the right side, these red connectors, is the RGB outputs of the on-screen display. Now, why did I do that? I did that because I didn't feel like adding in a bunch of toggle switch, or say buying a more expensive toggle switch that could switch all three inputs all at the same time to go between the on-screen display and the RGB input. People had suggested on my other video that you could use some resistors and diodes to kind of overlay the on-screen graphics on top of the RGB input but I didn't feel like doing any mods to the board. I mean, more than I had done. And considering I just had this stuff like from salvage old equipment, it didn't cost me anything. So if I need to use the RGB inputs to say, get the on-screen displays, I just use a cable like this and you essentially just hook all three cables up like this to the inputs and you do the same to the outputs and that will give us an RGB, or I'm sorry, that will give us the on-screen displays. Let me demonstrate. So we're currently watching the TV on the composite input, like I said, but I have that kind of loop through connector connected for the RGB. Now, if I push menu, nothing happens, but the toggle switch I installed on the side, that's the key. So I hit the toggle switch and there's the menu. So currently there is no way to see the on-screen displays on top of the video signal. So I can navigate through here uh, game mode, on, off. That just sort of increases the brightness. Brightness, contrast, color, and tint. That's it. Those are all the settings. But what I can do is I can say leave it on color here. And if I flip the switch back down, 
then I know that if I use the controls here, it's affecting the color. So see, now we're looking at monochrome. If I flip back here, see the colors all the way at the bottom there. So it's just a little bit of toggling. It's, it's not that big a deal to kind of switch back and forth. There we go. I like it about that, that level. Um, now, it's a bit different when we input an RGB signal because what I can do is I can plug, say, the R and the B into the device, say the PlayStation, and then I can hook up the extra G signal to the on-screen display. So you get like a little bit of a weird color, but it does overlay the graphics that way. So I can kind of fiddle with those controls a little bit. So all is not good with this TV though. Now, none of the mods I did have had any negative effects. Everything works properly. Um, the picture quality is great and all that. But there's another issue I'm having with this TV. So let me switch to a red field here. Now, it probably looks okay in the camera, but the color purity is not great on this TV. And the thing is, it seems to be really affected by things that are metal that are just nearby. Not magnetic things, but just metallic things. So let's see if all three of these colors look okay. Yeah, they're looking okay now, and let's give a full white. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to demonstrate the, the, the issues, and this actually looks okay. I'd say it's a little yellow over here in the corner, but the funny thing is, if I just move the TV around, it seems to be affected more by what's around it. Of course, now it's not doing it. Okay, so the monitor is sitting on the floor of my basement here. There's nothing metal around it. Let's move the chair away from it. And yet, it still has that horrible green color distortion and there's some blue at the bottom there as well let's um turn it i'm going to put the camera down and we'll turn it around i'm going to turn it back to the orientation i had it on top of the desk and look at that <laughs> it's got a little bit of a blue distortion there might be hard to see in the camera but what is happening i mean i know monitors are affected by a magnetic field but this seems extreme. I've never... Okay, so my ghetto Commodore 2002, this thing's been dropped. It's cracks all over the case. It's a mess. Uh, it's sitting in the same position. I move the TV to the side. It looks fine. Let's turn it this way. And yeah, absolutely no effect on it at all. So turning this didn't do anything. Let's... Uh... Let's turn this and move it. Okay, so see, that's normal. I If you move a, a TV kind of off axis, you know, like turn it 90 degrees, it definitely has an effect on it. But I've never really had one where just rotating it on a flat surface had such an effect. I'll turn this back. Yeah, it's fine. But if I unplug it, same input to my jack. Turn that on. Okay, so there we go. It's, you know, quote unquote working. It's still a little dark right here. And let me turn it. So, okay, so we know this happens and this distortion happens and it's much worse if I, you know, I rotate and move the monitor around. Let's see here. See all this that's going on? Um, so I am really confused by this. I am very confused. Normally, when you do have this kind of effect on a CRT, you just turn it off and you let the degaussing circuit, you know, take care of it. It will sort of recalibrate things. So we turn it off here and turn it back on. And, you know, there's no change. Let me take the back of the monitor off and I'll show you a little bit more about the insides. Okay, to take the back cover off because I have all these connections here, I did something where I added a little connector. Oops. It's a little janky here, but you can see that I built a little board that interfaces the wires that were under the PCB, the main circuit board. They come up through a hole and they're connected to this. I have the voltage divider there with two resistors and then all of these connectors go to the back panel. Okay, so I just disconnect these and 
that will let me remove the back. Okay, and here's the wiring harness from the other side. Like I said, these were kind of panel mount, uh, circuit board, PCB mount connectors. So I drilled the holes out. There are two screws holding it in from the other side, and then I used uh, copious amounts of hot glue as well. And we have the toggle switch there, which is a typical panel mount with a, with a nut. And these are the wires that go to that little PCB. So with regards to the color distortion, the purity problems I'm having when I turn the television or place it on top of metal things, I think people are probably saying, you need to degauss the television. Tell, you know, degauss the CRT. Well, yeah, what degaussing is, is you have a coil that goes around the, the picture tube. So here it is right here. It's It goes around the perimeter. And um, it's connected to the main PCB right here, this red wire. So what I don't really get, and I've gone handheld, is that the degaussing coil on this monitor, see it's hooked onto these plastic tabs up here. It goes across the top. They've taped it down there, so sort of away from the top of the screen here. Again, a plastic hook. But then normally it goes down around the other corners here. But for whatever reason, it takes a shortcut right here. So this is the dag ground. It kind of goes there. And the same thing right here. It's sort of like this. And there's a piece of tape on the bottom. Might be hard to see. I don't know what's up with the shortcut. And I wonder if this is what's causing the issue. Like it's... Because it's not around the entire picture tube, it doesn't degauss properly. I, I don't really know. So um, here's the connection. So that's it. This just puts 120 volts into here. I think this is maybe a seven ohms of resistance on this coil. But I'm wondering if maybe I should just take this off and uh, try a different coil. So I took apart another monitor, and um, look, I happen to have another degaussing coil here. This actually came off a 17-inch uh, VGA CRT, but the way it was installed on the CRT, it was sort of scrunched up. So now that it's stretched out, it actually looks like it probably will fit entirely around this entire picture tube without issue. So let me install this uh, bigger coil and uh, just give it a try. I don't know. What's the worst going to happen? It's going to blow out this piece of crap TV? Yeah, whatever. Here's a comparison of the two coils. This one is the original one from the TV here. Comes out at 8 ohms. Uh, this is the one I took off the old defunct 17-inch monitor. Strangely, they're the same size, uh, except for the bottom part. And this one comes out at 10 ohms. Okay, the new coil is in. Actually fits pretty good. I tucked it way under there. And it's here. It's hooked on there. Not bad. It's a little crunched up, but whatever. Here as well, should clear the case, no problem. And yep, there it is, tucked under there. So what I'm gonna do is, I haven't hooked this up, the wires yet, so I'm gonna, we're gonna do a live test. I'm gonna turn the monitor on, wire this up to a switch, turn the monitor on, put a video signal, and then I'm gonna hit the degauss coil, and we're gonna see what happens on camera. Keep in mind, please, do not work on a CRT, open, especially turned on. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, these voltages here can kill you probably 10, 20, 30,000 volts span on the size of the TV. So please don't work on an open TV unless you absolutely know what you're doing and you know what safety precautions to take. Okay, so it's turned to the 90 degrees, which normally has really bad distortion, but there's a little bit down there. Let me turn my shop light off. Okay, so you can see it a little better. Now I'm gonna activate the degaussing coil. It hasn't turned on yet, let's see what happens. Okay, so hey, that's better. Oh, the light turned on, it's on a motion sensor. So that did a better job. There's still a little bit of a messed up part down there, but yeah, this coil works a lot better, doesn't it? So if I turn off the degaussing coil, you won't really notice too much difference. <sighs> yeah, look at that, there's still some distortion. I mean, this monitor just might be a piece of crap. Um, maybe I can reposition the coil a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But, of course, the coil is de-energized right now. So that means the thermistor is cooling off. So if I turn it back on after what's well, only been a few seconds, let's see what happens. Okay, see, so it had a very minor effect. But, yeah, it never seems to really fix what's going on down there. 
So I'm just playing around with the coil a little bit here and I found some interesting stuff. So notice there's no there's no color distortion in the corner here. I I tucked the uh, degaussing coil under the picture tube as much as I could on the bottom here. The top position is basically identical to how it was before because the top of the case there's just not room. But on the bottom there's more space so I was able to really tuck it underneath. And what I did is I turned it off and on quickly because I'm using a light switch here to turn it off and on. And here's what I mean, what I did. Watch. So I did that on off really quick. And now there's no more, there's no more problem. The whole picture looks really good. So I don't know if it just needs a bunch of shocks. Let's try again here. On off. Okay, so actually you kind of made it come back a little bit there. Put it back on the red. It's easier to see. It's a little, it's a little off on the corner, but so I think the thermistor is actually heating up right now. So I have to let it sit a little longer, but yeah, I kind of give it a shock and then it just on and off quick. And then that goes away. But if I let it kind of turn on and then gradually fade away, which is what the thermistor does, then it kind of, you end up left with that little, that little spot down here and there's a little bit up here. And keep in mind, this is turned the way that it's really bad. So if I turn it the other way, it's probably going to look like crap again until I degauss it. But I'm not sure how to replicate this uh, unless I like basically plug the power cord in and unplug it really quick because that's just hooked up straight to mains all the time. Let's try it now. Okay, so there I turn it off and on and it's much worse now. See, there's a green spot. So we'll let it sit a second. So yeah, it's a bit weird that <laughs> it's this... It's definitely something with a degaussing here that's causing this. See? Now it's gone. Spit on the screen a little bit. It's a little bit up here. So, yeah, this is a really, really weird, kind of frustrating problem. Color bars. Yep. Those look great. So, what a strange problem. Okay, let me put this thing back together. Yeah, so there we go. This TV, it's a, it's a pretty good conversion. I'd say that the degaussing coil from that 17 inch VGA monitor, it was a junk monitor, helped this thing out and it works better now. It's less sensitive to where I put it. It seems to do a better job degaussing it. Although there's still a little bit of a problem on this bottom corner and I just can't figure out what's going on. But anyways, there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed the follow up and uh, you know, if you see one of these junk TVs on the street, maybe you should pick it up because you might be able to do an RGB modded on it yourself. Anyhow, there you go. If you uh, like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, put your comments and questions in the comment section below. And uh, yes, thank you for watching. Bye.